In this tutorial, we're going to use the flame game system to build flutter games and use velocity to move the girl around. We also have rudimentary gravity acceleration, which means the girl does move a bit faster the longer she drops. The hero of our story is named Lena, and she is a girl skater. This tutorial uses the new Flame 1.1 collision system, which was just introduced in April of 2022. Our hero, Lena, is based on the graphics from Overcrafted. There is a free demo on Open Game Art, and this is the package that we'll be using. You could also buy the graphics, but you don't need to buy the graphics for this tutorial. This is only if you want to make your game more professional in the future. So right at the bottom is a place to download the zipped file, which has all the graphics. Save it to your computer and extract the zipped archive. We're going to be using a series of graphics from the push single portion in the PNG image folder. These are some really beautiful graphics from the author Overcrafted. We're going to start off with a single graphic, so not the full animation set initially, and use a sprite component instead of a sprite animation component. Although you can drop in the sprite animation component later as you after you figure out gravity and velocity. I have several other videos on using the sprite animation component and making sprite sheets with the free version of Texture Packer. You don't need to use Texture Packer. I just like to use it for convenience. There are many different ways to set up the sprite animation that can be used in the Flutter Flame system. There are many different ways to use these beautiful graphics and animations in your Flame game system. If you use a sprite component, it's quite easy to change that into a sprite animation component. You just have to get the animation going. But let's get right into the code here and start off with a brand new flame game. So it's Flutter, Create. You don't need the platforms, this is optional. This is just to make my project a bit smaller. So I'm specifying Windows platform only. Uh, if you're on Android, you would use uh, Android and iOS, you would use iOS. So I'm calling my game Lena. We change into the directory. And add flame, flutter, pub add flame. I believe flame was just updated this morning. So in April, middle of April, it's not 1.1.1. I think it was updated about 30 hours ago. So create a directory for images. We're going to start off with uh, a single image, right? So it's in assets slash images off of your main project root. We'll be using a single non-moving image. It's just the first frame. And we're going to start in assets slash images off of the main project root. I'm going to change the name to girl or Lena or girl.png. In main.dart, delete most of the code so that we can focus on the bare minimum flame game system. So in run app, we're going to delete the contents of that. Run app is from Flutter and run app has to accept the widget. The widget that it's going to accept is a game widget, which is from the flame system. But the game widget requires a base game. So we're going to have a Lena game, which is a Lena game is a name you decide. It's going to extend flame game. So flame game is the base game that we're using. So the flutter widget name is game widget and that game widget is from the flame system. It requires a parameter game and it's going to be the instantiated Lena game that we just created and that extends the flame game. So we've got this blank world. It's a blank canvas and we can now drop in a character or an actor into our game system. The character will be Lena and we'll store her in assets slash images. So in your pubspec.yaml, make sure that you expose the assets slash images 
in your Flutter assets. It will be a completely black screen, which is what we want. We eventually want to have this sprite character, uh, Lena, appear on the screen. So we want to add her to our, our world here on the right hand side. So she's a sprite component. The sprite component is from Flame. And this is going to auto import it. So you notice that right here, it does uh, import the component. And we'll call ours Lena. Well, she needs a sprite, so we're going to have to load it. And there's an onload method within Flame. We're going to use async because we have to wait until the, the graphic loads from the disk. And this is uh, built into the Flame game. So we're going to use the override decorator. Uh, the thing just says that onload already exists within Flame game. And it's just a notation to let us know that we're going to override it. Uh, this async is the dart async await and it just tells the system to wait for a command if you use await which we're going to use right now so we'll first start off with just running the super so the existing onload method we're going to run it um, just to make sure that any, if you know in case something needed to run from within playing game we'll run that and then we'll start to load the sprite. And this is the file name right here. So it's girl.png. So she's not square, but just for simplicity, I'll put uh, 100 here so that she's going to be a bit distorted. Let's try to add Alina. Oh, there's Lena. There she is. I didn't specify the position, so she's at 0, 0 using the anchor point. So right here is her anchor point on the upper left of her and um, it's the upper left of the screen so if we, we can set our position right here as well too so it's two positions it's the x and y so this is the x and we'll move her in maybe let's say 100 pixels So she's 100 pixels in, and it's from her left edge here. And I'll just drop her down maybe about 30 pixels so we can see. Okay, so she's 30 pixels down from the top of her head and 100 pixels in. There's different ways to drop her down. We're going to use the update loop. So Flame has this beautiful... Uh, update loop built in. We we'll just run uh, update this from the parent flame game. So all this is is it's built into flame game. So we're running the all the built in um, algorithms that's built into the update. So this just runs the existing one, the super.updateDT. But we want to move her down. So we have Lena. And we, we know Lena's position. Y. So 
So let's just add one and see what happens. Oh, she's moving down. And we have quite a bit of space here. So um, we can see her progression here. She's moving at a constant rate. Okay, very good. But what if we wanted to have her increase? Let's try that. So let's create a velocity. So velocity has both x and y. So moving across horizontally, this is the x, and moving down, which is the y, vertically, up or down. And we're gonna adjust the velocity every time through the loop by the gravity. Whoa, moving a bit too fast. It's because her velocity is increasing every time through the loop. You can see that she's speeding up a bit as we go down. So we probably want to stop her. There's a Y. Boom. Okay, she's stopping. So Lena dot Y is the position of Lena. So it's the top of her head. The size one here. This is the size of the the screen that we're seeing. So one is the Y coordinate of the screen, and her height. So if we don't subtract the height from the height of the screen she'll be off the screen here. So let's see what happens when we do this. So if I delete her height, and we do it again, she's falling, but she goes right off the screen. It's, it's because her head is below the top. So let's subtract her height again. Okay, and we have rudimentary gravity now. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.